video, we're going to continue on our video series on building a neural network to classify an article of clothing from the Fashion MNIST data set. And what we're going to be doing in this video specifically is really just exploring that data set more so that way we kind of know what we're working with. And it's going to help us to build the actual neural network model in subsequent videos. So if you recall from the previous video, what we did is we loaded in the Fashion MNIST data <clears throat> and we split it into two sets of tuples. So the first set of tuples had train images, train labels. The second uh, set of tuples contained test images and test labels. So the first tuple is just the training data. So it's what we're going to actually use to train our neural network. And the second tuple is the test data. It's what we're going to verify some of the, uh, let's say, success of our neural network on. So the train images or test images are arrays and each of the, it's a list of arrays, each of the array components of the list consists of numeric information where each of those numeric components are just integers 0 to 255 that correspond to pixel data and each of those components uh, represent the image of what it's actually trying to represent. We're actually going to see what the image is. We're going to, um, I guess, plot the numeric representation into an image so you can actually see that. The train labels or test labels, each of those are lists of numeric information where the numeric information in each of the components of that array is a number or an integer and that is going to be an integer ranging from zero to nine where each of those integers corresponds to a particular class so either one of these items of this class list are the items that uh, correspond to what the image is supposed to represent so if the first image as we saw in the previous video is uh, an ankle boot then the tr the respective label is going to be nine because the uh, ninth entry of this class names assuming index and a zero is ankle boot okay so let's just dive a little bit deeper into this information so if i say print train underscore images dot shape this is going to tell us exactly how much uh, information we have in this whole list of arrays. So I'm going to clear the terminal and I'm going to say Python and the name of this file is fashion and NIST. So if I run this, we should see uh, it's going to take a little while because it's going to load everything in from the beginning of the file. And then we see the output there. So it's a tuple where we have 60,000 and then 28 and 28. So what this is saying is that we're dealing with 60,000 images. So it's a list of uh, 60,000 different arrays. And then each of those components in the arrays consists of 28 by 28 uh, items. So essentially that's the pixels that represent the shape. So again, if we were to do something similar, if we were to say print out the length of train images, we should get 60,000 because we're just saying how many entries are in this uh, list of arrays. So we see the second component that's printed out there is 60,000. That's how many items are in this, uh, in this train images object. So we can also do the same thing for the labels as well. So I'm just going to remove these so we don't get too much output. Or actually what I'll do is I'll comment them out so that way you can reference them later if you need to. And I'm also going to do that. So let me just get rid of this, comment that out. So train labels, as I mentioned before, if we print these out, let's just go ahead and print out train labels to see what we have. So if we print out train labels, what we should see is a list of numbers or a list of an array of numbers where each of those numbers, we can see it starts off at nine because we saw from the previous video, the first component of the training images, uh, or I should say the labels was a nine. The second one is a zero. The third one is a zero. And then we see some three dots or an ellipsis. And then the last three components of this particular uh, array. And those are the last three elements of this train labels. So it's, it doesn't show us the entire, um, the entire array, because that's 60,000 uh, things that we would be printing out to the screen. You can specify if you want to see everything printed out, you can definitely do that. Uh, but this is just NumPy's array of just uh, making this concise so that way you kind of see the first three and the last three. So I'll go ahead and comment this out as well, just so we don't have to get too much output here. And what we can do is we can also do a very similar thing just to kind of verify the test images as well. So this might be a little bit redundant, but if we say print test underscore images dot shape, we can take a look at how many images are actually in the test uh, set of data. So this is going to give us a bit of a different number because there's a lesser number of uh, items in the test set. And the way that we've loaded in the data, I should specify, uh, so notice that the number there is 10,000. We still have 28 by 28 because each of the remaining 10,000 images in the test uh, set is still 28 by 28. So I should say that when we did this 
function here. What this automatically does is it loads in the data and it does a train test split where 60,000 of those images were put into the first set of tuples and 10,000 of that was put into the uh, the rest of it, the test set. So we have kind of a 10, uh, one, well, 10,000 in the second set and 60,000 in the other one. If you want to split that into a more equal partition, you can definitely do that. And the low data takes, uh, low data function takes some parameters where you can specify how you want to split up that data. So if you want a more equal split with your training and testing data, you can do that. It's the defaults here are good. I think that they're generally kind of the, uh, there's no exact science to this, but you generally want to have um, as much training data as possible because your your neural network is going to be built on this. And you do want to leave a sufficient amount of data left over for testing, uh, but you don't want to sacrifice too much because your model will essentially be better with the more data that it has. Okay, so that's that. So we've kind of got a sense of how this all looks. Again, the test data, the number of test images is 10,000. The number of training images is 60,000. That's kind of the salient points there. So let's just go ahead and uh, print out the images. So remember, as I said, the NumPy arrays in the training images or testing images, all of those correspond to numeric values from 0 to 255, where each of those elements in that array is going to correspond to a pixel. And the overall picture of the array uh, corresponds to an image. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot that NumPy array as an image. We're going to see what it looks like. So let's do plt.figure. Okay, so I'm just going to put the parentheses at the end of that because that is a function. So again, this PLT is coming from matplotlib.pyplot. We're accessing the functions from that module like this, and we're starting off a figure that we want to plot. Now, what do we want to plot? Well, let's say plt.imshow. So image show is what this stands for. And what we're going to want to represent here is let's just represent the first component of the training images. So we saw the numeric representation of that in the previous video. And what we're going to do is actually plot that here. We'll also add a couple of optional things, which you can feel free to add or remove. I just think it makes showing the image a little bit cleaner. We'll say plt.colorbar. So this is going to give us kind of um, a color bar of the intensity of each of the pixels. And then we're also going to say plt.grid. And I'm going to set this grid to false, so that way we don't have this, uh, you know, kind of grid object over overarching on the image itself. And then after that, we'll just say plt.show. And this will actually show the plot. So I'm just going to write this, I'll clear the terminal for now, and then what we'll do is we'll say python fashion and nist. We should see um, something pop up here because it's going to actually plot what we asked it to plot. So it takes a minute or two. If I open this up, we see this image here which has been uh, generated from matplotlib. So you can see that this is the first image, as we uh, noticed in the first video, the first image corresponds to a ankle boot. And we can kind of see that here, the background is this darker color, and then the intensity of each of the pixels is represented by these uh, color bar bars here. So each of the pixels is uh, ranged from 0 to 55, and then each of those squares is you know, a given pixel, and that is kind of uh, giving us the representation of this image here. So that's a nice way to kind of take a look at the data. So if you want to try that on any of the other training images or testing images, so for instance, we can do that with the next image down as well. So this is the second component of the uh, of the training images data set. So again, we get a pop-up here and it looks like this is a t-shirt. So this is uh, a t-shirt, which as we saw from the data, uh, when we printed out the numeric labels, we saw that the first one was nine, second one was zero, and third one was a zero. And indeed, if we look at the zeroth entry here, it's a t-shirt at the top. So that's what the corresponding label of that image is. So what we want to do is, in order for our neural network to kind of process this information, we're going to want to scale the zero to 255 values from zero to one. Uh, and this is going to essentially make the images not colorized like they are right now, but it's going to make them black and white. Uh, the zero one is going to be either it's a you know black pixel or a white pixel. And again, this is kind of a pre-processing step that we'll explain a little bit more about in subsequent videos. We feed this information to the neural network. A lot of it's a little bit beyond the scope as to why a neural network needs to take data of a given form. And I encourage you to check out other sources, which I will link to in the description of this video. But for the time being, we'll just assume that we need to scale the values from zero to 255 to zero to one before we feed it into the model. And the way that we can do that is we can just divide all of the uh, training images and test images by 255. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to comment out this uh, plotting functionality here, comment this out right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale 
the training images and the test images. And the nice thing about NumPy is that when you uh, kind of, well, let me write this out and then I'll kind of explain what this is actually doing. So I'm going to say train images is equal to train underscore images divided by 255.0. So if you're not familiar with what we're doing here is we're redefining the train images object that we had before, which again was a list of NumPy arrays and we're scaling each of those entries by 255. And if you're not familiar with how NumPy kind of applies uh, these sorts of operations, is it scales them kind of component-wise. So each of the entries in the list are arrays, and each of the elements in those arrays are numbers. And we're scaling each of those numbers, we're dividing each of them by 255. So if, in doing so, we'll either get 1 or 0. And that's exactly what we're going to do with the test images as well. So we'll do test underscore images is equal to test underscore images divided by 255.0. Same thing. And this is going to give us a black and white output. So let's actually see what that looks like. Let's let's plot the first um, 25 or so images of our data set. And actually, what I'll do is I'll just kind of copy this from another screen so we can take a look at what that looks like. So a whole ton new going on here. What we have is we're creating a plot figure just like we did before. So unlike what we did before is we're specifying the figure size to be a 10 by 10 grid, which is just going to allow us to kind of neatly output some of the things. Uh, we're going to range through the first 25 items. So we want to go through the training image data set and just print out the first 25 and then kind of print them out side by side. We're doing some things to make each of these subplots. So we're kind of saying we want a the first row to be of five items, second row to be of five, and we're doing that for every subsequent row in the plot. We're specifying that we don't want any X or Y uh, ticks. So sometimes when uh, by default for any of the plots that you create, they're going to have those little tick marks. Uh, if we just specify an empty list here, we're kind of saying we don't want any of those anywhere in any of these subplots. So just get rid of them. Uh, also, just like before, we're setting this to false. So we don't want to show a grid for each of these subplots and then we're actually showing the images so as we loop through this uh, list of or like I, I should say as we loop through the number 25 we go through each of the images in the training images and then what we do is we just uh, plot those out and then we uh, give a nice little label. So for each of the subplots that we are going to be plotting on this overall larger plot, we're going to create the X label, which is just going to be the, the name of what we want to display right below that subplot. And the way that we're going to grab that is we're going to refer to the class name uh, list that we had before, and we're going to access into that list with the respective number. So training labels of I is going to give us that number, and we're going to print out whatever the respective string or the label is for that. Not the numeric value, but the actual text string value. And then once we've created all the subplots, we're just going to show that off and uh, see what we have. So let's just go ahead and run that. So I'll write that, I'll clear the terminal, and then I'll say Python fashion and mist. We'll run that, take a couple seconds. We'll see what we get here as output. Looks like something came up. So we have the output here. So we can see that we have five rows, uh, I should say five by five rows, so five rows here and then five columns as well. Uh, and then what we have is each of the first 25 items of our training data. So we've got that also, as we did before, scaled down where instead of uh, the images are being represented by pixels from zero to 255, they're now being represented from just zero to one. We've scaled it from just zero to one and that's giving us this black and white look for each of these images. And again, that's a prerequisite step for our neural network. So that gives us a better sense of what we're dealing with on the data side. In the next video, we're going to be taking this data and we're going to be building our neural network. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. The code will be available on my GitHub. You can check that out there. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.